Hi guys and welcome to another video. I've been stuck in a lockdown for so long and it's only just easing now but I still can't go further than 25 kilometers from my house and most of that is water unfortunately. So I had a lot of time to revisit old photos and reflect on my favorite trips that I've done over the years and have yielded me the most amazing bird photographs. And today I want to share three of my most favorite locations with you that I think anyone should visit at least once in their life. That brings me to location one, and I had heard many amazing stories over the years that there's birds everywhere and you can just walk right up to them. They're not skittish, they're just right there and you can get a large amount of species in a short period of time. What location am I talking about? Florida in the United States. And I must say it didn't disappoint whatsoever. The first time I visited was in 2010 and I spent about two weeks and got more than 50 species and got really nice images so that was simply amazing and mind-blowing to me to have so many birds that are literally right there on the beach amongst the tourists and you can walk right up to them get a headshot get a full body shot get them in flight get them fighting in front of you fishing in front of you it was simply amazing and mind-blowing so I have a lot of fond memories about that trip. We started our trip by flying into Tampa and then locating ourselves just south of Tampa in Sarasota. Why did we pick that spot? Because we wanted to have one base and then one of the main locations that we wanted to visit was Fort DeSoto, south of Tampa and north of Sarasota. And the other location that we had figured out that we wanted to visit definitely as well was Fort Myers Beach, about an hour, an hour and a half south of Sarasota. And then between Fort Myers Beach and Sarasota, there was also Cape Coral that has these amazing burrowing owls. So of course, when we landed, we had the highest expectations. And so we drove in the dark the first morning to Fort DeSoto. It was a little bit difficult to just find our way around, but basically we found a nice beach and to our amazement, there were birds everywhere, basically. The very first morning in the very first light, we had this amazing white morph reddish egret right in front of us. Usually the reddish egrets have a red and gray plumage, but sometimes there's this rare white morph. And over the many sessions that we spent up there over the next two weeks, we got some of the most amazing images. There was many, many pelicans, brown pelicans, white pelicans, a lot of really cool shorebirds like marble godwit, sanderlings, dunlings, red knots, gray plovers, a great mix of shorebirds. None of them were very afraid of people at all, so you can get right close to them, get some really cool shots of them, like bathing or flapping their wings. There's also a lot of gulls around, a lot of terns, and sometimes you can see these cool skimmers as well. And some of the other birds that are really amazing to get around for desert is just a mix of the white ibises and then five or six different species of egrets and herons. So you have the great egrets, you have great blue herons, you have snowy egrets, you have little blue herons, you have tri-colored herons, all in all just an amazing mix of birds. So that was one of our favorite locations to visit. Another location that was really cool was Cape Coral with those really cool borrowing owls that just live in people's front yards essentially, just in little burrows in the ground. So when you photograph them, you have to be careful that you're not trespassing onto other people's property. But we found some cool nests where the owls just sit outside the nest, enjoy the sun and give you some really great photo opportunities. So that was another really fun thing to do. And the next location we really enjoyed was Fort Myers Beach. There's some shallow lagoons on the beach. There's a lot of tourists, but there's also a lot of birds in these lagoons. And everywhere in Florida, what I really enjoyed is that you can get right into the water with the birds, even during the winter time. I visited twice in February and it was always nice and warm and I could get right into the water with the birds and that was just such a fun thing to do, especially during the winter months. So what birds did we see at Fort Myers Beach? Again, there was a great mix of egrets and herons. We saw some spoonbills there. We got a lot of shorebirds. We found these American oyster catchers that were just holding these snails and little mussels and shells in their beaks. So we got some fantastic photo opportunities there. Found some other shorebirds like 
red knots and there was also a lot of royal turns, a lot of sandwich turns, just a great mix of different birds. And one of the greatest experiences down there was that one afternoon a flock of black stigmas flew into one of the lagoons and the hotels actually right at the beach reflected into the lagoon giving us really nice golden looking water. And then the skimmers started to fish in the shallow lagoon. And if you've ever seen skimmers fish, that's a pretty amazing experience. You have this big long beak and they basically fly through the water, having their lower mandible in the water and skimming the top of the water surface. So that was amazing. It was very difficult to photograph, but we got some shots in the end and that was such a great experience having these really cool birds fish right in front of you. And again, they were not afraid of you at all. You could stand right there and get your shots. We like to go to Fort DeSoto in the morning and then Fort Myers Beach in the afternoon, which seemed to just give us the best light angles and the best result. Another location we visited as well was down in the Everglades, the Anhinga Trail, which is another amazing bit of nature with stunning scenery and also super tame birds that just sit on the poles right next to the footpath, giving you amazing opportunities to take really nice close-up shots of like Anhingas, cormorants and other herons. So that was another location we really loved to visit. And we spent a few days there because it's south of Miami. So it's a few hours drive from Sarasota, but all in all, another place that I would recommend to anyone visiting Florida. And lastly, there's one more bird that a lot of people really want to get when they visit Florida, and that's the Rosiati Spoonbill, a stunning bright pink colored Spoonbill, but we found it a little bit harder to get nice photos of than some of the other birds. And the best moment we had with them was up in Fort DeSoto again. One afternoon we spent there, we were about to pack up, but with the last light, the sun just setting, Three spoonbills landed right in front of us, giving us really amazing photo opportunities in the last light with them fishing right in front of us. So while I've only visited a limited amount of locations in Florida, I would just recommend it to anyone to visit it at least once in their life because it's so amazing. Instead of going to a very difficult location where you have to sit in a hide for days or freeze your butt off, no, here you get up in the morning, you pick a location, you put on your shorts, you walk into the water and you're essentially guaranteed great bird images. That was such a relaxing thing to do and such a nice change of things for once because usually, as you know, it's very hard to get bird images, whereas down there, you still had to work for your bird images, but it was a lot easier than in other locations. It was just very rewarding. And in a short period of time, in like two weeks, I got 50 or 60 new bird species and got some fantastic images. So it was just, so rewarding and so relaxing that I think, at least for once in your life, it's definitely worth a visit. The next spot brings us across the world to the cold summers of Arctic Norway. Got there like end of June, beginning of July because of some commitments that we had, but it would have been much better to actually get there towards the end of May or beginning of June. So we lost out on a few species that we couldn't find anymore because they already lost their prime plumage or had already gone south again. So all in all, timing is very important when you're visiting the Arctic areas because a lot of the birds only stay there for a short period of time for their breeding season and then travel south. But that's exactly the appeal about these areas as well, because a lot of the birds that we only know as gray and brown birds, most of the shorebirds that you can see in winter along your shores, they fly up there to breed in summer and they have the most amazing colors on them then. So seeing one of these shorebirds in bright red plumage was one of our main goals up there and that was something that we achieved pretty early on. One day we just took off to the side of the road, parked the car, went for a little walk and in almost no time we saw one of these stunning birds standing on a rock in the arctic tundra. So we approached it a bit more and got some really really nice shot because it just took off and was never seen again. So that was one of the most stunning moments from my bird photography career early on where I just remember seeing this amazing bird and getting it in this amazing habitat. There's a lot of mosquitoes up there so you have to deal with that but What's so fun about this area is that you can just park your car and even just on the sides of the little roads left and right there is beautiful arctic tundra with not much sort of high trees or anything so you can see the birds from a great distance and there's just all sorts of really cool shorebirds and small songbirds that just 
sit up there on the small bushes and there's even shorebirds like this Taming stint that actually perch on these flowers and branches. How cool is that? Have you ever seen a shorebird sitting on a little bush? So it's just amazing to see all these birds in their breeding plumage. So all in all, a really memorable trip simply because the habitat is so different to anything we know. And you just park at night next to the road, you see little ponds, you see beautiful low vegetation, you see some blue throats there. On a little lake we found a long-tailed duck with a few babies. So all in all, just fantastic opportunities to get some really nice images and just experience something completely different that you can't really see anywhere else in the world. And the last destination for today brings us to the boiling hot winters of the Kimberley in northwestern Australia. You heard right, boiling hot winters that hardly gets below 30 degrees even in the middle of winter there. Although it's probably not really winter, it's more the dry season, but it's basically hot and dry, no rain, no clouds and a lot of bushfires. So quite an interesting change of scenery and this is a trip I've done more recently in 2018 with a few main target species. The first target species I really wanted to get was the very rare and elusive black grass wren up on the Mitchell Plateau and then Goldian finches. I'm sure you all heard of these amazing really colorful little finches. So these were the two main birds and of course there's a lot of other really nice honey eaters and other finches that we also wanted to get, maybe some cockatiels and some budgies, but the main birds we really wanted to get was the golden finch and the black grass wren. So I flew into Kununurra from Melbourne and then I met with a friend, thanks for driving Adam, and he picked me up at the airport, we went into his four wheel drive, attached a camper trailer to the car and then started our drive towards the Mitchell Plateau which would take us about two days. And these are some of the roughest roads you will find with big corrugations, big spiky rocks and blown tires on the side of roads, broken camper trailers on the side of the road, pretty crazy terrain and there's no cell reception, there's nothing out there basically. So it's kind of a bit scary if you're just used to living in the city with this police and ambulance and everything right there. No, up there it's kind of like you're driving out towards the end of the world in a way so it's a very unique and quite daunting experience but also a lot of fun at the same time because there's less people and more nature out that way so we where we stopped the first night we actually found a tree that was flowering and there was dozens and dozens of different honey eaters and lorikeets all over that tree so the first night where we got some really nice rufous throated honey eaters yellow tinted honey eaters so that was really good start to that evening and then we stayed the night had a nice campfire had a nice dinner and continued on the next morning with a big river crossing and then drove all day to our next destination we just stayed the night got some shots of a wee bill but that was about it nothing to write home about and then we continued on to the Mitchell Plateau so once we got to the Mitchell Plateau we had to find these rare black grass right? and that was easier said than done because the area that they are usually in had been completely burned by out of control bushfires so we had to find new areas we spent two days looking and we actually ended up finding a group of these amazing birds so we actually found the birds in the morning but the light was too harsh so we decided to come back in the afternoon and in that afternoon we actually found the birds again and they posed really nicely for us on these nice tops of the rocks and for probably half an hour or something we just had a group of these birds around us just running from the left to the right calling and it was just an amazing experience to have these stunning birds right in front of us it's such a unique and rare bird so it was such a just amazing experience another bird that we had heard in the camp that we liked to get was this stunning looking northern rosella a really cool parrot from that area up there so the next morning we set out to get a few shots found a dead tree where they were perching on and actually got some images. And the last morning up there, we decided we wanted to try to find the endemic Kimberley honey eater, kind of just brown and gray bird, but also a bird that 
only lives in that area. And whenever I do a trip to a certain area, I always like to get the birds that only live in that certain area. So we went out to look them and found them just down near a river and got a few shots of them. So that was great. And on the way home back to Kananara, we actually also managed to pick up some purple crown fairy wrens along the way, which was also a bonus for me because I'd never seen them before. So back in Kananara, part two of the mission started because now we wanted to find long-tailed finches, mask finches, double barred finches, crimson finches, and most of all, goldian finches. How do you get the goldian finches? Well, during the dry season up there, which is the winter month in Australia from about maybe July to September, there's hardly any rain up there and all the water that flows through the creeks kind of dries up. So often there's just a few puddles left here and there where a lot of the birds come in to for a drink in the morning. So the next few days we spend looking around trying to find a few puddles that still have some water in them and that had birds visiting. It took us a while but then eventually we found one great spot that had up to 100 or 200 goldian finches and some other species coming in the morning allowing us to take some amazing images. And that's also where I captured one of my favorite images, the five male goldian finches on that nice and twisted branch. And the way I got this image was simple. We found a nice water hole where the birds were coming in and then they actually like to stage on little branches before they fly onto the ground because they feel safe. So we set up a few perches around the water and whenever the birds would come in, they land on our perches first and then go down to the water. We actually went there every morning for a whole week, but on the third morning, we suddenly had a flock of about 200 goldian finches come into the water hole. Really amazing. And over the course of the next few days, we actually even got banded honey eater. We got some paddle lot shots. So it was really good all in all. So while the first two locations, Florida and Arctic Norway were somewhat easy, I wouldn't say easy, but a lot easier than when it comes to the Kimberley area. The Kimberley area is just amazing. The scenery is amazing. The birds are amazing, but it's really tough work to get the shots that you really want because it's very hot. It's very dry. There's bushfires and the birds are not very easy to find. You have to find the birds in the perfect spot, then you can get your shots. But there's a lot of walking around, a lot of finding some perches, a lot of finding the right spots, and then also just sitting in the right spot every morning for a whole week, hoping that you get some shots. So this is something to be aware of. If you're going to a lot of different areas in Australia, it's a lot harder to access them, a lot more remote, and the birds are actually not very easy to photograph in Australia. You have to be in the right spot at the right time and know where the birds are and what the birds are doing to get images. Whereas for instance in Florida, I found it much easier. You can just drive up to the beach, get out of the car, the birds are right there. You have to be aware if you visit an area like the Kimberley, you have to work very hard for your images. So I hope you enjoyed today's insight into three completely different locations that I've visited in the world. I'm really hopeful that one day in the next few years, we will all be able to travel again and see some of these destinations. What are some of your favorite destinations that you visited? Please let me know in the comments. Do you have some locations that are on your bucket list that you feel like you have to visit for sure? Let me know in the comments. Also make sure to check out my eBooks and videos down there in the description that will help you to dramatically improve your bird photography and make your images look absolutely amazing. I've linked them for you down there and you can either stream them or download them from my website. Other than that, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down there and turn on all the post notifications and give me a thumbs up for this video. And I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in one of my next videos. Bye.